Hello, this is Melanie with the App Garden. And first, I want to thank you so much for requesting access to one of our sandboxes and taking a little deeper look into the product that we're offering. This video will help you navigate and set up that sandbox so you can go ahead and really dig into what the product has to offer. One of the things that you should have received is an email stating that you are now a registered user for the facility tracker. In this message, you have the login link and a temporary password. Your username will be your email address. Once you've logged in using that temporary password, one of the first things you may want to take advantage of is changing your password. Here in the upper right hand corner is a half person. When you click on them and go to profile, you can go ahead and enter your new password, confirm it, and then click save. That new password will be available to use upon your next login. Next, you're going to want to establish some service categories. Go to Settings, Basic, Service Categories. Now, the system will already generate some generic service categories for you. Should you choose to want to delete or edit some of them, um, you can do so. You'll see here this little red button that's a trash can. This will delete. This little green button will edit. This is a recurring theme within the product, and it's available for all of the features. So if you choose to edit, you would simply go ahead and change the name and click Save. Next, you want to go ahead and establish a department that these service categories fall into. Here, we've got IT, and we've linked it to Media. Now, this is important because these service categories um, will help restrict who has access to what, who can receive certain work orders, um, who can work certain work orders, who can manage certain work orders. To add a new department, simply click Add New Department, give it a department name, and then go ahead and choose the service categories that best relate to that department, and then Save. Next, you'll want to establish locations which is under Settings, Basic, Locations. Now here, you're going to originally see your school district as the name of a location. You're going to have access up to 10 locations in the sandbox. So if you want to edit that name, simply click that green Edit button and change the name and click Save. To add a new location, go ahead and click New Location, give it a name and a location code. Now, if for some reason only certain departments or service categories are tied to this location, go ahead and select them now. If you choose to leave that blank, then all departments and all service categories can relate to that location. Just a little pointer, your location code is important because that is what you see at first view on your dashboard as to who needs work where. Next, you want to go ahead and establish a user which is under Settings, Basic, Users. And you'll see that you're already registered as a full administrator. This means you have access to everything and anything. But what you want to do is go ahead and click Edit. And just make sure that you are checked for all departments and service categories and all of your locations. Next, you'll want to go ahead and add a couple users. One of the first things you may want to start with is a work order submitter. This is somebody who can submit a work order and request work from a certain location. You'll simply choose Add New User and provide a first name, last name, and email address. Now, feel free to use a real life person. Should you just want to play around and not give anybody access to your sandbox, you can always use a generic email address that doesn't exist, and the system will accept that. To make them a work order submitter, go ahead and just make them a portal user, and then select the locations that they can submit work orders for. Now you may want to do a technician, somebody who can actually do the work, and somebody you can assign work to. We'll go ahead and create a user for them. And
Now you'll see that I've used this in the past and you'll want to be careful. Um, so I'm going to alter it because it will not accept more than one of the same email into the account without giving you an error and not allowing you to do this. What you'll want to do is give them access to work order management. This means that they can go in and perform work and they can do things within the system. A technician can perform work. Transferring work means you're going to allow them to transfer work from one technician to another. And go ahead and select the department they're linked to and the service categories. When I'm playing around and I do my generic people, I just go ahead and set a technician for everything just to get a feel of the, you know, the initial setup. And then you want to go ahead and select the locations that they have access to do work for. Now, if you want to create a sub-admin, a sub-admin would be somebody that maybe you work with an assistant, um, somebody who heads a department. Um, you can go ahead and choose add new user. And go ahead and give them that email address. And what you want to do is you'll go ahead and check work order sub admin. And then you'll want to go ahead and give them the access to permissions that you have access to. So this is a good way to create a little mini admin that doesn't necessarily, you don't want them to have access to everything. So for instance, you can have them manage just locations, users, equipment, inventory, work orders themselves. They can close work orders or they can manage prevent and maintenance. If you allow them to manage things, this means they can add, delete, and change any of these topics here. And then you'll want to go ahead and tie them to a location where they can perform these sub-admin duties. And then you can click Save. Now that you've created your users, we'll go ahead and submit a work order ticket, add new work order, and you'll see that that requester will automatically generate and pick a location, a service category, priority, and then since you're an admin you can go ahead and automatically assign your technician. And now you've created your first work order and you can manage it from there. Thank you so much for your time. And if you need any further support or you have questions about how to further navigate this product, feel free to click the help button and email us here at support. We'll be more than happy to reach out to you and get you what you need. Thank you so much. Have a great day.